hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, formerly known as idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis is the topic, and I'll use the abbreviations HCM and IHSS. Now, HCM, formerly known as IHSS, is of significant importance because in clinical vignettes it will often be described as a cause of sudden death, and in particular in young uh, people, athletes, that's a very common one, a runner, a basketball player, things like that. This is an inherited disorder and it is autosomal dominant, so there were, might be a mention of family history in the uh, vignette. What's the pathophysiology? Well, normally, you have a heart with four chambers, of course, and I'll quickly label them. Left ventricle, left atrium, right atrium, right ventricle. The key issue is this uh, intraventricular septum right here. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, this septum is very much enlarged, and I'll exaggerate it for you, kind of like that. So you've got this incredible enlargement, and that is known as septal hypertrophy. Now what that does is that the blood that normally goes into the aorta through the aortic valve is now significantly compromised, as you can see, because of this enlarged septum. So you get a whole host of problems. The first is that this will result in a decrease in cardiac output. The next thing that will happen is that this left ventricle actually becomes stiff and very non-compliant. And what that does is that it resists filling during diastole. So when the blood is actually trying to get from the left atrium to the left ventricle, the process does not occur normally because of the stiff left ventricle. Diastolic filling is limited. So normally if you have this much blood, uh, because of the stiff ventricle, it'll have less blood. So that further reduces cardiac output. Now, what happens is when a person is exercising, the person will have tachycardia, of course. Heart rate rises during exercise. Well, that is where the symptoms happen because during tachycardia, there is less time for the heart, in particular, the left ventricle, to fill with blood. So because tachycardia allows less time for filling, the symptoms tend to appear mainly during exercise. So what are some of these symptoms? Difficulty breathing, chest pain, palpitations, and the most worrisome is syncope. Once syncope happens, that's essentially where the person collapses. So a typical scenario is somebody's playing a game some sport with their friends and all of a sudden they just collapse to the ground and when they're taken to the hospital they're pronounced dead and it's significant because the man was only 22 years old let's say so that's a very typical scenario one thing that I wanted to mention on physical exam that's very important and this is definitely tested on clinical vignettes is that this septal hypertrophy produces a very uh, interesting murmur it's called a systolic ejection type murmur when you oscillate the heart. And there's two specific things that you can do to increase the um, murmur sound or decrease the murmur sound. This murmur can be increased um, if you do a Valsalva maneuver. Now what is a Valsalva maneuver? Basically, it's when you attempt to exhale with closed airways. A perfect example of that with closed airways. So your mouth is closed, you've got both of your nostrils pinched to close them, and you're attempting to exhale. 
If you do that, this murmur will be increased. This murmur will be decreased with a simple hand grip. And these are important because this will be on a clinical vignette to sort of distinguish. They'll, they'll give you scenarios and they'll say, this is what's happening. What will the murmur sound like? Will it be increased? Will it be decreased? Things like that. Diagnosis. Basic uh, cardiac tests, echocardiogram, will definitely be able to tell you uh, the uh, anatomy and the obstruction. And then the EKG will show that the left ventricle is indeed hypertrophied. So those are very basic uh, cardiac tests, very standard. Prognosis, uh, 1 to 3% mortality. So although it's not a very high rate of uh, death, the rate of death is significant enough to take this very seriously. And in terms of treatment, basically what you're trying to do is slow the heart rate to allow more time for diastolic filling. And that will, of course, allow you to have a greater cardiac output. And that is accomplished with medications known as beta blockers. And also used in the treatment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or calcium channel blockers as well. Let's take a look at a couple clinical vignettes. 35-year-old black man presents to your office for a first-time visit. He has no past medical history and takes multivitamins daily. He's active and runs approximately three miles a week. He has a 10-pack year history of smoking and one to two beers a week. Temperature is 98, blood pressure is 110, pulse is 65 and regular, and respiratory rate is 15. On exam, you note a two out of six grade systolic ejection murmur at the right upper sternal border that has no respiratory variation, increases in intensity upon going from supine to standing and valsalva, and decreases in intensity with sustained hand grip. There is a prominent non-displaced point of maximal impulse. The remainder of his exam is unremarkable, most likely diagnosis is. Well, this is a very good question that basically describes that murmur and when it increases, it increases with valsalva, decreases with hand grip. And that's classic for idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis, IHSS, or also known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And finally, you are seeing a 33-year-old man who has a history of idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis for a follow-up visit in your clinic. His medications include metoprolol and ranitidine. He smokes one pack a day, drinks six packs of beer each weekend. He has a family history of sudden death. His blood pressure is 110 and pulse is 78. There is a 3 out of 6 grade systolic ejection murmur at the cardiac base. You decide to repeat his cardiac exam with hand grip. Following this maneuver, you would expect to hear. Well, the answer to this question was actually answered in the previous question that the murmur decreases with the hand grip. So that would essentially be choice A.